Hey guys, today we're going to be hackintoshing my main PC. Now, as you can see, it is already all set up here. This is after the massive saga. It is the 26th of July that I'm editing this, and I managed to finish this on the 25th of July. But I started this all the way back on the 8th of July. What took so long, you may ask? I was busy, and I made some huge mistakes doing this, and it required a lot of effort. So this video is going to document everything I've done, basically. And it might be very long, I don't know. For the start of the video, you'll see my first mistake, which was using a macOS distro. But what is a macOS distro, may I ask? Something you should fucking avoid, <laughs> to put it in light terms. And honestly, the website was really sus. It, first of all, it tells me to disable my ad blocker, which is just a big no-no. I don't like it when websites tell me to turn off my ad blocker. I mean, I, I did it anyway, because I wanted to download macOS. And when I did it, I was presented with this. Millions of ads that were literally slowing down my computer. I mean, look at this. This is actually ridiculous. Which, honestly, should have been a big red flag from the start. A website full of ads usually isn't a good thing. I decided to proceed anyway, though. When I went to the download page, I was presented with even more ads. And at this point, it just was ridiculous because the computer was really slowing down. It slowed down every computer I tried this on as well. I proceeded and downloaded and installed it. And I didn't even realize what a macOS distro was until I showed people what I had done. I sent this video to a group chat and well, I was told this was a macOS distro. And when I found out what that was, I decided I didn't want this and this install had to go. So bye bye. So anyway, let's go back in time to when this whole thing started. Enjoy! Oh yeah, disclaimer, some of the information here may not be correct. Just to let you know, so please do not use this video as a tutorial. This video is mainly for entertainment purposes and not as an actual tutorial. I'm going to need quite a few things to get started. I'm going to need proper tree, which configures the config.plist. Then I'm going to need Gen SM BIOS, which basically spoofs a Mac model, so macOS thinks it's running on a real Mac, when in reality it's just running on a PC. Then I need SSDTs, which basically help with the ACPI of the system, so the machine like runs properly. Even though ACPI will not be perfect, as sleep will not work. Then, I'm going to need some Kex, which are basically macOS's drivers. I'm also going to need USB toolbox to configure the USB map on the computer. And finally, the main part, open core. Open core is the bootloader for this, and that's what basically makes this work. And open core is what allows us to do the whole thing in the first place. So, let's move on to what I call the boring part, configuring the config. First of all, we've got to copy the EFI folder from the open core folder to the root of the USB. Let's get those SSDTs downloaded. I only need two for this system, so I'll go ahead and download those two quickly. After that, I can just download them to the ACPI folder in the EFI folder. I'll copy these to the USB later, even though I could have literally saved them to USB. I'm not sure why I didn't, but it's not too big of a deal. I also need to rename them first, because for some reason, they aren't named properly on the site. However, it only takes a couple seconds, so I didn't really mind. With that out of the way, I can now go ahead and copy the kex over to the kex folder. Unfortunately, I can't find the footage of me doing this, so sorry, I'll just show you the screenshot. Now we can modify the drivers, not the kex, another drivers folder. Yes, I know it's confusing. Anyways, we've got to add HFS plus EFI to the drivers folder. And then I'm going to move the ones we need to keep out of the folder just to avoid confusion. And I'll move the other ones to another folder just in case I need them, in case I made like an error or anything. Then I move the ones I removed earlier back into the folder, which are the ones we actually need. Okay, so now we need to copy the sample.plist file from the docs folder to the OC folder. Then we need to rename it to config.plist. Then we can open it in proper tree. We can leave the ACPI alone as those are taken care of by the SSDTs, although we need to make an OC clean snapshot. As for Booter, these quirks need to be enabled. It is different depending on what CPU it has, but this screenshot is the ones I would have needed to enable. I admit, I lack the understanding of some of this, so I may get some of this wrong, and I had to get a lot of help on this part. I'm pretty sure that I was able to skip device properties, as the Xenon on my PC doesn't even have an iGPU, so let's move on. 
As for kernel, I would have needed to enable these quirks. For miscellaneous, these quirks that are on your screen right now are the ones I need to enable. As for NVRAM, the parts circled in red are the parts we need to edit. Now these configs are different depending on your system, so this is what my config ended up looking like in the end. Now for platform info, this is probably the best part being in the config. We need to use GenS and BIOS to generate the Mac information. You need to enter the Mac model you want, then it will generate a serial number for that model. Now, the model shown in the recording is actually not the correct model and I had to redo it later, but I can't find any footage of me doing that, so sorry. Anyways, this is what mine looked like in the end, and yes, this is correct as you can see here. Anyways, macOS will now think I have a 2015 iMac. And now finally for UEO5, we need to enable everything circled in red in this screenshot. And that's it, for now. Originally I was going to use an online installer, but it didn't work. It just kept getting stuck at 2 hours and 16 minutes. When it rebooted, the install didn't work, so I decided to use the offline installer. So let me show you how I made the USB. First of all, I need to download Big Sur from Apple. Now this next part, I have no idea how this happened, but I lost the footage of me imaging the USB. Thankfully, I did take this picture, so I kind of can tell you what I did, but... It's still annoying that footage is gone. I must have been really tired because it was like 3am so maybe I wasn't recording at all. Anyways I need to reformat the USB as macOS external journal and using the GUID partition map. I'll just call it macOS because well that's what we're putting on it. Then I had to paste this command that's on screen into the terminal. This command is what flashes macOS to the USB. Then I had to mount the EFI partition that's on the USB using diskutil in terminal. Then I can copy the EFI folder that we made earlier to the EFI partition. Anyways, it is now the time we've all been waiting for. We are finally ready to install macOS.
macOS is installed, but you probably noticed something, how laggy it is. This is due to no GPU drivers. It is possible to patch the drivers, but there are issues such as screen recording. It just shows blue. And a computer crashes when I connect two displays on startup. So it was time for an all new GPU. So yes, I decided to get a new GPU, an AMD GPU, as macOS supports them much better. But this is not going to plan either. I picked up an RX 580 8GB from CEX, but I got a kind of nerfed version of the RX 580. The RX 580 2048SP. Basically it's a half last version of the regular RX 580 from what I can tell. Anyways, the point is macOS does not support it. So I had to return that and get another RX 580. However, I ended up with a really long one that was not going to fit my PC case. So, I had to end up drilling the hard drive caddy out. Got it! At least this graphics card did work in the end. But still, that was a lot to go through just for a graphics card change. Anyways, that was it for the drivers. The rest were already taken care of by Kex and the config.p list. There's just one thing left for me to do. We need to disable Show Picker, which disables the boot menu thing that OpenCore has. So it will boot straight to macOS when I boot from the drive. Make sure to press Ctrl Enter on the Mac boot option before disabling this though, because if you don't, it will boot to Windows instead of macOS. Finally, I had to move the EFI files from the USB to the EFI partition on the SSD. This can be done by mounting the two partitions using the terminal with a disk util command and then copying the files across like so. And well, that's it. My PC has been successfully Hackintosh and it's working really well. I've actually been using this more than my Windows install on here. macOS has been really nice to use. It's so much better than Windows for like video editing and stuff like that. Everything works. Even sleep works now, which is surprising because it wasn't working before. This was definitely worth it because the macOS experience is awesome on here. I've now gone ahead and installed all my programs, including a totally legit copy of Final Cut Pro. And yeah, this machine's been great, and I might actually switch to this. I guess we'll see with time. Anyways, thank you for watching, and here is the final result.